Hey there, Mango Steens. Okay, so this past week has been pretty busy. And so I decided that I was going to reawaken the bedtime, ser bedtime stories. Um, I'm not going to do them exclusively because I don't really want to be on camera, you know, every video for you guys. But I just figured that I would do one for you just so that there's something for you. <laughs> so anyways, this one for tonight is a short one. And you may have heard it if you're from like way back when. Uh, this is not a reboot. The old one is gone. I had to take it down due to copyrighted music stuff or whatever. Which kind of sucked because all the sound effects that I put in was pretty good. Anyways, this is called Crucifixion. And it's written by Adam Troy Castro. He first tried to kill it during the Napoleonic era, early in his damnation, when the lover he tried to turn instead merely died. Her body repelling the blood, he attempted to mingle with hers. He had imagined that if he could make another creature like himself, he wouldn't be so lonely anymore. But Madeline merely writhed in agony for a day, and a night, and a day, and a night, aging decades, even as he watched her beautiful milk-white skin turning to desiccated parchment. Her devotion to him turning to hate. She cursed his name with her last dusty breath. He needed to die then. Not the false death that he'd lived for only a few short years at the time, but the true death that he imagined would free him from the guilt of his betrayal. And so, he placed a pistol to his head and pulled the trigger. The blood, so violently driven from his body, became a scarlet flower on the wall, like a last bouquet for the lover now turning to dust by his side. He'd fallen to the floor, dead. His wound was an open mouth, facing the ground. A perfect invitation for his blood to return to him. And the blood obliged, pouring down the wall in a hundred hungry rivulets, each one moving much faster than of its own, each one moving much faster than gravity alone could have pulled it, each one so much in control of its own destiny that the wall it abandoned was left dry and unstained in its wake. The puddle it formed on the floor quickly flowed back into his wound which just as quickly closed, leaving him to sit up, cursing the fire that burned inside him. But the blood did not care what he wanted. It didn't care if he strode naked across the battlefields, letting the cannon fire rip his flesh to ragged shreds. It did not care if he was blown into a hundred pieces and mingled with the corpses of a thousand martyred soldiers. It did not care if he was decapitated or buried or burned or gassed or eaten. It was just blood. Every drop was just like every other drop. 
all infinitely divisible. And as long as so much as one drop survived, even if only as a stain on a scrap of cloth, it gathered his pieces together and made him whole and sent him forth to feed. Once he leapt from the deck of an ocean liner in the dead of night and sank gracefully into the cold and black, certain that this at last would be enough. It wasn't. His lungs filled with water. He drowned. Small fish came to feed on him. Blood mingled with the currents. He found himself reborn long enough to drown a second time, then lived and died. Twenty years of hell, living and dying again and again before he made his way to the nearest land. By then, the blood was ravenous within him. Nobody in the small fishing community that found him survived that night. The blood drove his limbs, forcing him to take them all, the good, the evil, the young, the old, even the babies in their cribs. Before the sun rose the next morning, he faced its unwelcome light across streets filled with pale, desiccated corpses, cursing it for not taking him the way he had once heard it was supposed to. But it was just daylight, the giver of life, the force that gave strength to the blood of all men, and which could never hurt the beast that pounded in his veins. That was decades ago now, decades of growing despair and self-loathing, decades of obsessing on the day he'd become what he was. A lazy summer day so beautiful that he'd gone off by himself and taken a nap in a field, only to awaken, imagining it a dream, see a single glistening red spot leap from the grass beside him, flow up his cheek like a reverse tear, and enter through the corner of his left eye decades of remembering what it had been like to feel the blood boil inside him as it all changed in a moment of flaming pain. Decades of suspecting that whoever played host to the blood before him must have somehow succeeded in driving it away, leaving him with the colossal bad luck to lie down on this spot and be chosen. Decades of wondering how many centuries his predecessor must have had to live with it. Centuries? Millennia? And decades of killing himself again and again, only to be repeatedly brought back to life by the damned slave master blood. Until now, he has spent years gathering the knowledge and resources he needed to build this place. A year more, a year more in putting it together and making the hundreds of little adjustments necessary to make his little solution as thorough as it needs to be. 
it has to be thorough. It is not enough for his flesh to die. Not enough for his spirit to wither inside him. His flesh is just ambulatory meat. His spirit, just the cool wind that drives it. It's the blood that is tainted. The blood that makes him what he is. The blood that makes his existence a sick compromise between life and death. It is the blood itself that must die. He cannot permit a drop to remain. And so he hangs from a hundred hooks, bleeding from a hundred wounds, onto the hot grill that boils his blood, one steaming drop at a time. Every drop that hits the broiling hot metal below screams audibly as it turns into steam. Whenever he looks like he's going to stop bleeding, the steel clamps that grip him from either side squeeze him tighter, inexorably wringing him dry. When there is no more blood to have from him, he will be dropped onto the stove like a piece of meat and cooked for an hour or two. At which point, the chamber will fill with acid. It is agony. He does not care. He is only afraid that it won't be enough. And as the blood screams and the clamps wring him tighter, he thinks the last sane thought of his long existence. Madeline. And that was crucifixion. I really like that story. I always have. Anyways, have a wonderful scary night, guys. <laughs>